Hello and welcome to episode 17 of Change of Raiment. Before we begin, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you will be in our midst at this time as we hear and share these pertinent testimonies to encourage all of the listeners. I pray, Lord, that we will all be brought into closer union with you as a result of hearing these testimonies that are based upon your word. We thank you for hearing and for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So tonight we have a very special program for you, or today, or whatever time zone you may be in. We have special guests with us, two of them. We have my dear sisters, Kathleen and also Chanel. Welcome to Change of Raiment. Thank you. Yeah. They're no stranger. Well, one of them is probably a stranger to you all, <laughs> but the other one, you all see her week after week. But we will talk to them in a few moments, but we want to set the stage. So we're dealing with tonight change of raiment, of course, the, the trials, the triumphs, and the testimonies. You know, when we think about reforms, whether it's health reform, music reform, Sabbath reform, education reform, any reform, even dress reform, for some people, it's a rather smooth process. You know, they see it from the word of God and they pray and they say, Lord, I've got to make changes. The changes are immediate and praise the Lord, they never go back. For others, they have a different experience. You know, they have the experience whereby it's a daily, ongoing, arduous, strenuous battle with self. Mm -hmm. And so, in fact, with every reformatory action, it requires sacrifice. And that's exactly what we're told in volume four of the testimony. So we'll go to the screen at this time. And it says, reformatory action is always attended with sacrifice. It demands that love of ease Selfish interest and the lust of ambition be held in subjection to the principles of right. Whoever has the courage to reform must encounter obstacles. Okay, so whenever we have to reform in whatever area in our lives, just understand it will come with sacrifice. But I'm sure you both can attest, as I can attest as well, there is no sacrifice that we can ever make where the benefits of that sacrifice do not outweigh the sacrifice mm -hmm. itself. As a matter of fact, God would never ask us to sacrifice anything that's for our good to retain anyway, mm -hmm. right? The things that he's asking us to sacrifice are the things that would harm us physically, mentally, spiritually, morally, and in every other area. Mm -hmm. And that's what this slide says. So Kathleen, can you read this for us? God does not require us to give up anything that it is for our best interest to retain. And all that he does, he has the well-being of his children in view. With that, all who have not chosen Christ might realize that he has something vastly better to offer them than they are seeking for themselves. Steps to Christ, page 46. Amen. So whatever side you find yourself on, whether you're one of those people that was able to adapt, adopt the dress reform immediately, praise the Lord or whether you're one that it's a, it's a struggle, you know, a daily struggle, a battle, mm -hmm. praise the Lord because God's grace is sufficient and he mm -hmm. can, he has, and he is helping us to come into conformity, full conformity with his will. So I had Kathleen read before I even introduced her, but I'm going to introduce them at this time. So we'll start with her. Um, Kathleen, I've known for a few years, not too many, but we go back a little time. Mm -hmm. And um, she's a medical missionary. She's also a birth doula. Mm -hmm. She is a wife. She's a mother. Most importantly, she is a humble, virtuous woman of God. And Thank when I you, think of someone you. that epitomizes that meek and quiet spirit, I think of Kathleen. She's just so quiet, so <laughs> humble, so loving and always smiling. So thank, thank you, you for being here, agreeing to come on here. And I thank you both because you're going to be very transparent with mm -hmm. us, with our viewers oh, yeah. and share some of your struggles. Um, so to encourage, because yes. to let you all know at home that you are not alone mm -hmm. in your struggles with dress reform. And the other guest, I've known her, I don't want to date her or myself, but I've <laughs> known her for Close to 20 years, about 20 years since yeah, she was a wow. teenager. It's been a while. Mm -hmm. And I've seen her grow and blossom into a beautiful, virtuous woman. You all Save to Serve International. <laughs> you know her as Save to Serve singing evangelist with the powerful, anointed, beautiful mm -hmm. gift of music that God has given her. And she's using it to the glory of God. Amen. What you don't know about her, she's also an amazing educator. She is a mother. 
she is a wife as well, and she is also a virtuous daughter of God. Yeah. So you all hear me all the time. I'm not here to take up the time. I've talked enough. We are going to turn the program over to Kathleen and Chanel. They're going to be sharing with us their testimonies and some of the struggles that the Lord is helping them to overcome and has helped them. Yes. And it will be a great blessing and encouragement for you all. So we'll start with Chanel. Okay. And I want to ask you, firstly, when did you first hear the message of dress reform? And what was your initial reaction to the message? How did you respond? Um, well, I um, was in family worship and my brother sat myself, my sister, my cousin, my mom, my whole family down and brought to us this, what I thought at the time, this new revelation. Um, and I did not like it. I <laughs> repelled it. Mm -hmm. I wish that I did not hear it as it were. I stuffed my ears. I did not want to, um, I didn't want to conform. I thought that I was fine um, wearing pants. I didn't think it was a, sal a salvific issue. Mm -hmm. What's the big deal mm -hmm. um, was my initial reaction. And um, that began the, the struggle right there. Mm -hmm. Once I made that, once I had that mindset of, um, once that pushback came in my mind, the struggle just continued for years. Wow. Yeah. And you were a teenager at the time, is I that was, correct? Yes, I was in high school when okay. I heard that message. Okay. Yep. And who's your brother, just for our viewers? <laughs> Angie Henriquez. Okay, so this is my sister, okay? I don't like yeah. sister-in-law. This is my sister, okay? All right, so thank you for sharing. Just a follow-up question on that. Can you share some of your background experiences that may have contributed to your initial response to dress reform and your subsequent struggles? Well, I, I'm coming from public school. Okay. So in my entire life, I have been going to... Um, public school, elementary school, all the way um, even through college. And I was always surrounded by individuals who were not in dress reform. So once the message again came to me, um, just in the school where you spend most of your time as a young person is in school, um, it was really, really strange for me to even soak in. And another thing is um, in my church at the time, and I was raised seven Adventist as it were, um, no one was really practicing dress reform mm. except for people who at the time we just deemed as shepherd's rods. Okay. So they had that stigma, that, ti that title, um, that look um, to them. And so anything that looked like shepherd rods, smelled like shepherd rods, I, don't, I didn't want anything to do with it. Mm. And so that's, that's kind of how I, that was my surrounding, that was my, the influence that was around me. And that pretty much um, solidified my decision at that time that mm. I did not want to soak that message in. Mm. Yeah. Well, praise the Lord for growth <laughs> as Amen. we will hear as yes. we go forward. So Kathleen, I'll pose the same two questions to you. When did you first hear the message of dress reform? What was your original response to that? Yes, after high school, is when I was introduced to the Save to Serve ministry. Um, I attended um, a couple Sabbaths and when pastor was preaching on dress reform, my initial response was, hmm? <laughs> I never heard anything mm. like this. Um, I was raised seven-day Adventist, but my family's background is Catholicism and just like Chanel, um, my family and the public school system. I was around those who wore pants. So it was a lifestyle for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. um, so it was pretty odd that I was raised seven day Adventist and wasn't informed of these truths. And yeah, so I was just a bit confused and I was, you know, bothered that I wasn't informed by it mm. since I was raised in seven day Adventism. Right. And mm -hmm. I, I share that with both of you all. That's something that's common to me as well, being raised as an Adventist and not hearing that message until I went to college. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, like, where, why is nobody talking where about this? Right. Why is nobody right. preaching about this? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's there in the books. It's there in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So moving on. So at the time, Chanel, of your first hearing about dress reform, what were some of your top fears? If you were to ad uh, adopt dress reform, <laughs> what were your fears? I think I would have to say my fears was really 
standing out. I think when I was in high school, the pressure of being in high school is you want to fit in. Mm -hmm. So I did not want to stand out. Um, I didn't want to be questioned. I just wanted to fit in and just kind of ride the waves of mm -hmm. high school. And also at the church, I didn't want to stand out and, you know, anyone, you know, kind of give you the side eye. Like, hey, you wear long skirts <laughs> a lot. What's mm -hmm. going on? Um, it was it was that that atmosphere was really thick with, you know, you must be a fanatic. You mm. must be an extremist if okay. you um, every Sabbath you just have on these long apparels. So mm. um, those those were some of my um, initial fears. Mm -hmm. um, back to being in high school again, mm. there was just one girl who I remember who wore long skirts all the time. She was Muslim. She had the whole from mm -hmm. head to toe. She was dressed that way for PE, for every um, oh. um, area mm -hmm. of um, high school, as it were. And, um, you know, no one will question her. Of course, you know, she's Muslim, mm -hmm. but I didn't really have an answer for that. So I think I was afraid of people questioning me okay. because I also was rebellious. I did not like the message. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to have to come up with a reason why I did not, or, or sorry, why I was wearing long skirts, or why mm. I was wearing skirts, period. Yeah. Right. And when you look at it now, there's people that want to stand out, but they want to stand out for the wrong reason. Right. Mm -hmm. So you always have some people that, you know, will color their hair mm -hmm. in these outlandish pink colors or have their hair sticking up on their head or mm -hmm. dress eccentric, you know, just to garner that attention. But then when it comes to standing out for Christ, especially at that age, you yes. know, that teenage mm -hmm. fitting in acceptance, that is such a big thing, yeah. you know, that we don't want to be that Daniel. We don't want to stand alone. Yeah. But um, young people that are watching, please, you know, it will open up so many doors of witnessing. If you are in the public setting, not just public school, but you will be around other people, mm -hmm. it uh, opens up so many witnessing opportunities yes. for you as well. So Kathleen, how about yourself? What were some of your fears? You know, it tied in with Chanel a little bit. Um, my biggest thing is knowing the truth for myself and not renting in a, in a sense someone else's beliefs. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. one thing yes. about me is I have to wholeheartedly believe in something and if I do, I'm fully committed. Praise the Lord. And so um, that was a really big thing for me because like Chanel mentioned, once I'm questioned on it, you know, I don't want to just say, well, I just heard my pastor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or a pastor mention it. I want to be able to do my research and even have a personal experience, which will keep me firm once counter arguments will come right. or the gesturing or whatever the case may be may come that I can stand 10 toes down regardless mm -hmm. of the waves. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. And that, that she brought out a very important point that you're not just supposed to do it because you hear it, but be like the Bereans. What does the Bible say? These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Why? Mm -hmm. Because they received mm -hmm. the word with all readiness of mind, but they did what? They searched the scriptures daily to mm -hmm. see whether those things were so. So don't just take it for granted. Go back and that's why when we're sharing these dress reform studies, we put the scriptures on the board, we put the quotations on the board for you to go back and see it in black and white for yourself. So you're not just following what, you know, what you're hearing, mm -hmm. but you actually hear the voice of God speaking to you, that this is not just an opinion right. from Sister Hillary or pastor or whoever you hear the message from. It is indeed from the word of God. So mm -hmm. that is very important. You know, but we all do need a starting point. Yes. So let's fast forward from your <laughs> high school years. And I think, Kathleen, you said you were in college, right, mm -hmm. when you first heard. So fast forward. I guess the answer to this question is kind of um, <laughs> self-explanatory based on the responses you gave. But your transition was more gradual rather than oh, yes. immediate. Can you mm -hmm. kind of take walk us through that process? Oh, boy. My <laughs> process was very, very gradual years I've been um, struggling and to be honest every day it's the same dying to self mm -hmm. um, and I think that's that's okay for for, for our viewers to hear that mm -hmm. you know um, every single day you have to die to self the temptations may still come mm -hmm. because we're in this world we're going to be tempted mm -hmm. but um, it's okay for you to continue and matter of fact we're encouraged to continue to rely on the strength of God Amen. so that we can overcome daily. Um, 
you know, again, when I first heard the message, I did not like it, yet I complied. Mm -hmm. I complied because my brother was a pastor. Mm -hmm. I, and then I went back and, you know, it was a wrestle in my head. Okay, let me comply. When I come to church, I'll wear certain mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. When I'm around family members, I'll wear certain things. I stopped wearing pants. I began to start my career as mm -hmm. a teacher, et cetera. And then I, re I got into a mindset like, you know, Chanel, you're grown. You can wear what you want. Kind of like that do what thou wilt mm -hmm. mindset started mm -hmm. to just creep in and just take advantage of me. I said, you know what? I'm not going to try to fake who I am on the inside. I'm just going to wear it. I don't you know, care what the rep repercussions are. I'm just going to mm -hmm. wear what I want to wear. And um, eventually I made that decision, which we'll talk about, I guess, later. Mm -hmm. But it was uh, back and forth, back and forth continually. Wow. Yeah. God is so merciful because yes. when you think about that, like you said, if your struggle at home may not be on the point of dressing. It may be with diet. It may be with music. It may be with so many other things. But God is so merciful because he could cut us off at any time, any time mm -hmm. when we decide to go back and rebel against him. But he's still so merciful and still is working with us and wooing us and drawing us no matter how rebellious we are he's still yearning after us and as it were chasing after us yeah you know until we finally come to that point of full surrender and when we do he doesn't chastise us or he doesn't treat us as we deserve to be treated but mm -hmm. he accepts us he embraces us and he says hey those sins i will remember no more mm -hmm. so i'm just so thankful that we serve a god of mercy a god of love mm -hmm. a god of of <laughs> you know forgiveness yeah so kathleen can mm -hmm. you take us through some of your um struggles yes um going back post high school into college i was seeking the lord earnestly at a young age i gave my life to christ i was baptized at nine years old um, but as I mentioned, the reforms weren't taught along mm -hmm. those years. But once I received this message, I was like, oh, okay, this is new information to me. Um, but it, it, because it was pants wearing, especially was embedded in my lifestyle and the people around me, that's what they wore. It was for sure gradual. Mm -hmm. um, and even in college, uh, going to different events, um, you know, it made more sense to wear pants uh, rather than a skirt. So it was it was pretty odd um, for me to give it up at that present time. Um, it's kind of like the way I think about it is, um, you know, I talked to different people where you would give them the history of um, holidays. Mm -hmm. um, and just like me, just because you have the history, it doesn't mean that they can initially give that up because there's social ties to it. Mm -hmm. It's something that they've been doing for a long time. So that was the case for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I didn't really have a starting point and I didn't have people around me aside from the church that I was going to save to serve from time to time mm -hmm. where I saw examples of it. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't have my core friends mm -hmm. near me that was practicing that. We were wearing weave, we were wearing mm -hmm. makeup, we were wearing our pencil skirts. So it. It took a while. Mm -hmm. It took a long time. <laughs> well, praise God. Praise God that he works with us yes. step by step by step. And mm -hmm. so we're going to go to the screen because we've been talking about um, pants wearing uh, that came up. But you also mentioned pencil skirts. You mentioned m makeup. You mentioned weave. So mm -hmm. as we've been going through this study of dress reform, a lot of times when we're first introduced to it as women, we think that it's just, OK, I have to stop wearing pants and that's it, yeah. <laughs> you know. And then when we begin to study more and learn more and hear more, we realize there's great other sacrifices that have to be made. Mm -hmm. So we have to talk about the length. We have to talk about the revealing clothing, the tight clothing, the mm -hmm. weaves, the false hair, the makeup, the mm -hmm. jewelry, everything, yes. the extremities being covered, you know, the whole nine yards. And it's like, Wow, Lord, pants was such a struggle, yes. and now I have to do it's like a mountain. <laughs> yeah, yes. now I have to do this yeah. and this and this. But I want us to read this statement here, and this will um, kind of put in perspective because God, some mercifully, doesn't reveal everything to us at once because mm -hmm. sometimes we would just be so overwhelmed with right. it, you know. Mm -hmm. And so He reveals it to us <laughs> as we overcome one thing by His grace, not by our own strength. Then He says, "Okay." She's ready now to accept, 
this next reform. So mm -hmm. let me reveal this to her. Let me reveal this now. And so let's read this statement here from volume one, one of my favorites. And this not only applies to dress, but any um, reform or standard that God is leading to it, leading us to it. It said, God leads his people on step by step. He brings them to different points calculated to manifest what is in their heart. Some endure at one point. So mm -hmm. praise God, we gave up the pants. <laughs> now the yes. next thing comes, but fall off at the next. Mm -hmm. At every advance point, the heart is tested and tried a little closer. If the professed people of God find their hearts opposed to this straight work, it should convince them that they have a work to do to overcome if they would not be spewed out of the mouth of the Lord. So this is a salvational issue. And I think that's what we've been laboring to show week after week with our dress reform series, that this is something that is for our spiritual benefit, for our physical benefit, for our mental benefit, for our overall benefit. And it shows our our obedience to God, to Christ. It shows if we are allowing him to be Lord of our lives or if we, as Chanel said, are of that mindset, do yeah. what thou wilt. You know, we are our own God, as it were. Yeah. So we're going to get back to the testimony. So now that you all have given up pants, what were some of the other areas of struggle or were there other areas of struggle in addition to pants? Like you mentioned the, the weave and things like that, mm -hmm. but that you really, really struggled with as it relates to dress reform? For me, it was a conversion, honestly, from head to toe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and again, I'm thankful for this series because I find myself even learning more um, watching it. Um, but for me, I also wore weave. I wore, um, my, my clothes was, um, I guess, tight fitting. Not that I was trying to, but it was tight fitting. Mm -hmm. um, short, my, I think I struggled a lot with the length of my skirt, mm -hmm. <laughs> even, you know, sometimes the material. Um, so it, the whole process had to be, I had to relearn um, what a godly woman mm. looks like. What I had to unlearn yeah. what I thought was beautiful, what mm -hmm. I thought was attractive. Mm -hmm. And God had to really teach me. And now through his eyes, I'm able to, by God's grace, make the right choices. And mm -hmm. it's, again, I'm still growing. I'm, 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 I'm excited for the journey mm -hmm. of where God will lead me to where he will have me to be. But um, yes, Amen. from head to toe. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Yes. <laughs> Just the same for me. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I, I did wear weave. I wore makeup from time to time. Mm -hmm. And I was so invested in it, too, because there were all these YouTube tutorials mm -hmm. and how um, to do your eyebrows and et cetera. Um, I was also a bit of a product junkie too when it came to my hair, mm -hmm. um, when the natural hair movement was booming. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> trying to find the best product, mm -hmm. you know, and then you're just putting a lot of your money into that and it turns into an idol yeah. because what you spend can be a sign of, you know, where your heart is. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was dyeing my hair. so. God, just the same as you, Chanel, was transforming me from the inside out, from mm -hmm. head to toe. Mm -hmm. um, but another struggle was heels. Okay. Heels was introduced mm -hmm. to yeah. me at a young age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I remember the first heels that I ever bought, <laughs> or I asked my mom to buy, I should say. Um, but that was a while. It wasn't until COVID, mm -hmm. not going to church, mm -hmm. where I kind of laid it aside. Mm -hmm. well, and so God. I praise God for COVID in that way, where... You know, it made you self-reflect and see what was essential. Yes, that's um, true. Mm -hmm. Amen. And right here, I just want to put a plug in. So if you haven't seen all of the <laughs> the dress reform, we're talking, we're introducing a lot of things at once. So you may be saying, wow, I didn't know this about hair and I didn't know this about other things. Um, go back from part one and watch it all the way up where we have dealt with most of these. We still have to deal with cosmetics. That's coming up soon. That We'll deal with the makeup and things like that but we've dealt with hair and other topics, heels. So just go back. I just want to put that in there for those who may not um, have seen, who may not have seen um, the other parts of this series. So now we're going to get to the good part. <laughs> well, it's been good already, but now we're going to talk about the turning point. So we talked mm -hmm. about the test. So we said the title of this is the trials, the triumphs and the testimony. So now we're going to talk about the turning point and get into the triumphs, the victories, and where we are today. So I'm going to ask both Chanel and Kathleen, was there a 
particular turning point in your experience where you knew, where you heard the voice of God saying to you, you know, hey, this is what it is. And you decided, I'm not going to turn back by mm-hmm. God's grace, not in my own strength. Yes. But <laughs> what, what was that turning point? Can you mm-hmm. share with us that experience? And anyone can go, go first. I'll go first. My turning point was during COVID, actually. Um, for a while, I was going back and forth with mm-hmm. pants wearing um, and skirt wearing, especially at work where I would have to bend down and work on the floor and things in that nature. So it was a little bit more convenient to wear pants. Um, but during COVID, there was one particular day where I was going to Lowe's to buy gardening seeds and gardening equipment. That was the first year I actually started gardening, actually. Um, so I went to the store, well, prior to the store, I was home and I was trying to determine what shall I wear, a skirt or pants. I put the pants on first, but a voice in my heart said, no, you should wear the skirt today. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I was wrestling with it a bit. I'm like, what? I was like, nope, let's be obedient. <laughs> I put on the skirt. I went to Lowe's. I was in the parking lot. As I walked out to enter the store, um, there was this lady that was driving by and she put her window down and looked at me and said, I can tell you're a Christian. And I was like, what? (laughs) How can you tell? She was like, based on how you carry yourself and whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Praise God. And just by her saying that, I knew God was speaking to me through her because he knew Um, where to meet me. I needed a personal experience, a personal word from him, aside from, you know, what I've been learning regarding the history and Mm -hmm. what, yes, I needed the confirmation. That was really big because like I mentioned earlier, for me to fully commit in something, I have to personally have an experience from Mm -hmm. God so that Mm -hmm. if I'm met with opposition, it doesn't matter what you say. My testimony is that God confirmed it for me. And so after that experience, I already know skirt wearing is the way to go. Praise no the Lord. turning back. And you got rid of those pads, right? Yes, they were gone, <laughs> gone, gone. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. All right. Well, oh boy. Um, my transition w- began on a particular Sabbath. And let me just go back a little bit. So, as stated, Pastor goes over dress reform ever so often. <laughs> you know, during Bible class, usually is when the that study would come. Mm -hmm. And I've heard this message again since I was in high school before my brother went off to, I think before he went off to um, to Oakwood. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, ever so often that topic would come up Mm -hmm. and I would make that decision in my mind, nah, 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 nah. (laughs) I was always excited for when Bible class came because I was like, all right, Daniel and Revelation, let's go. (laughs) And that particular Sabbath he came um, with a thick, his, his Bible in one hand and a thick packet of papers in the other <laughs> hand. And I said, okay, mm-hmm. let's see what this, st- <laughs> what this study is about. And then he said, dress to form. I was like, oh. <laughs> and when I did that, again, there was no one around me. There was no friends that was sitting mm-hmm. in that row. Mm-hmm. There was no distractions around me. And um, I heard a still small voice that said, this is your last time. Mm. No one said that, but it was when God speaks and it's, it's, it's not, it's not loud, but it's just really subtle. And, you know, just as a parent, you might tell your child, um, stop going on, stop climbing on that dresser, Mm -hmm. stop climbing on the dresser. All right, listen, I'm gonna tell you one more time. You know, it was that, it was still love in his tone, Mm -hmm. but you can just, I heard the solemnity in that tone. Mm -hmm. I sat up straight and I took in. I didn't listen to the message because it was my brother. I listened to the message. I didn't listen to it because it was my pastor. I listened to the message because this is what God told him to share with the congregants. This is what God was saying to me. This is your last time, Chanel. That came from God. Crazy. And then I had to make that decision. Okay, Lord, let me, let me um, listen. And by God's grace, um, that's the first time that I, I really listened to the message. I did not listen to disagree to challenge, mm-hmm. but it was more so let me really um, 
hear what this message is saying. Why mm -hmm. does God want us to um, change our apparel? Why should we change our raiment? Mm -hmm. um, have a change of raiment, as mm -hmm. it were. And um, when the church service was over, usually the tendency is to, you know, catch up with your friends. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, by God's grace, I'm thankful I decided to just leave church as soon as the, you know, um, the Bible class was over. I mm -hmm. went straight in my car, drove straight home, went in the kitchen, grabbed a garbage um, bag. Mm -hmm. I went in my closet and I just wow. swept through. And I took down all my pants. I put it in the mm. trash can, and I put the trash can outside in the garbage. Praise <laughs> the Lord. I said, if I even keep it inside, yeah, I'm going to have that temptation because I've done it before. I said, this time I'm going to put it outside mm. so I'm not, you know, <laughs> dumper diving. That's right. <laughs> um, and that's when I really made that decision. Because, you know, some the time that I made it before, I was nervous that I would go back, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I stopped before. I'm going to pick it back up. I'm going to, you know, but this time was different. Mm -hmm. And by God's grace, I've been growing um, ever since. Mm -hmm. And haven't gone back. Praise the by Lord. By God's grace. By God's <laughs> grace. And that's, that's a very important point that Chanel brought out about um, getting rid of those temptations and mm -hmm. those things that yeah. you may be tempted to go back to. Once you get that conviction... Don't just say, oh, I'll get rid of it tomorrow. I'll do it next mm -hmm. week. I'll wait till trash day or whatever. You have to do it. You have to do it immediately. Yeah. Whether it's the CDs you have. Well, people don't use CDs anymore. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, whether it's, you know, a piece of garment, whether it's food, whether it's yes. whatever it is, get it out of your house, get it off of your computer, get it out of your reach, mm -hmm. right? Even if you have to throw, um, like destroy it with scissors or whatever, mm. but um, God will help you. Yes. He will help you. And yeah. I'm, I'm so thankful. And I know that this testimony is encouraging so many out there because Praise I'm sure God. you all can relate to what our sisters are sharing here. And again, I just thank you both for being so transparent and sharing um, pers such personal um, stories as well. So mm -hmm. Kathleen, um, you shared your turning point experience. So when you fully submit it to God, in the area of dress reform, what other breakthroughs did the Lord open up mm. for you all? Yes. During that time, God was transforming me in a very interesting way. I was trying to let go of different stumbling blocks and temptations, as mentioned, like the weave and the cosmetics, like the nail polish and et cetera. So when I was able to give up the pants wearing it gave me the strength in Christ to toss out the weaves mm. and Ebenezer, right? Yeah, yeah. it was definitely an <laughs> Ebenezer. Mm. So praise the Lord. I did not hesitate because they they are idols, mm -hmm. um, especially like I mentioned before. You're investing so much money into it, and little did I know I could be saving if I embraced and I was in c content with how God, you know, made me. Mm -hmm. um, but interestingly. Oftentimes, a lot of reasons why we cling to them so much is because of insecurities mm -hmm. um, that can develop because of other people. That's true. So for an example, a personal example, um, you know, I'm petite. When I was younger, a lot of people would um, comment on how small my arms were. I mean, you know, I was wearing short sleeve and et cetera. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, you're so small. You're so small. And I'm like, well... It wouldn't make sense if God gave me big arms and I'm petite, you know, but mm -hmm. it was constantly said. Mm -hmm. And that's what led me to wear long skirts mm -hmm. or even layer up or not um, wear tight, you know, mm -hmm. top garments. Um, but end up being a blessing because it was, Absolutely. you know, easier uh, route for the dress reform to layer up and wear long sleeves. So God mm -hmm. used it in a very special way. But, yeah, that. That's how it happened. Amen. That's mm -hmm. powerful. Now, friends, I'm just going to tell you, I don't want to steal this from Chanel, but this is going to be powerful. So listen oh up. <laughs> if you've been sleepy, <laughs> listen up here. Okay, go ahead. Um, I, I really like this question because I, I always um, reflect on it quite often, actually. Um, God gave me a breakthrough, and I'm... Uh, well, I'll tell you about it. Well, I, one of the things that I prayed about earnestly before I even made the decision to transition um, 
you know, my, my clothing. So I've been praying to God, maybe since I was 19 years old, <laughs> for a husband. Mm. And I know this, I know that a lot of young people, a lot of young women are here right now. You're praying to God, asking God, Lord, I want a, a man of God. And I want, I, I want a God-fearing man who I can, you know, have a home with, who I can have children with and have a family, um, a, a little token of heaven on earth, as it were. Mm -hmm. And um, in that prayer, in one of my prayer sessions with the Lord, I was pouring my heart out. I said, God, please hear me. I, you, know, you know, I was pouring my heart out and I left that um, prayer session with peace. Now, a couple months after, there was my test. And now, of course, I'm looking back at this in retrospect. Um, a couple months from there, there was that Bible study. Mm -hmm. And in that still small voice, God, is, God was showing me, you cannot have a godly man if you don't know how to, if you're not fit for a godly mm -hmm. man. Yeah. You don't know how to submit. Mm -hmm. And that was one thing I thought I, you know, I thought I didn't struggle with um, submitting. I, I didn't think I would su um, struggle with submitting to a godly husband. Mm -hmm. um, but God was showing me that I needed to submit first to him. And that through that submission with him, then mm -hmm. I'll be prepared to, um, you know, have a, a godly man by God's grace. Mm -hmm. um, and thankfully, that's exactly what happened for me mm -hmm. um, after I submitted. And again, just like Adam and Eve, right? Adam had to spend his time with mm -hmm. God. God was preparing my husband um, for me and he was preparing me for my husband. Mm -hmm. I had to um, make that decision, have that time with God first, solidify my my faith and my trust in him I'll, with this journey for him to trust me with anything else. Um, Amen. And a few months after I made that decision, within that year, um, God allowed my husband to send me a text. Hi, Amen. my name is Richard. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was, it, it was really, really beautiful. I'm thankful to God for how my journey is. And now I, I don't want to say to my viewers that if you, you know, transform your dress, you're not doing that for a, a, a husband, you're not doing that for a wife or, mm -hmm. you know, um, you're doing that because you are showing God that you can submit. Mm -hmm. And once you can submit to him, the breakthroughs will happen. Mm -hmm. um, whatever that breakthrough is, it might not even be for a relationship. Mm -hmm. It might be for something financial, but God can't give us breakthroughs if we're holding on to our cherished mm -hmm. idols. Mm -hmm. Um, if we're holding on to things that we feel we cannot separate from. And at the end of the day, when we get to heaven, we're going to all say heaven was mm -hmm. cheap enough. Amen. Garments, Amen. Lord, Lord, I'm, we're we not even going to remember, remember exactly any, any of this. Yeah, so again, right. God is in the business of giving breakthroughs. He did mm -hmm. it for me. He will do it for, he's done it for Kathleen. He's done it for Hillary. He's, mm -hmm. He'll do it for anyone once we submit. But on the topic of dress, it is difficult for um, a lot of young ladies, especially those who are seeking that companion. So I would just um, submit to you, my personal testimony is once you, um, you have to be in God's hand, let him mold you and shape you, let him make you fit for that. And that means that when he brings different truths to you, whether it's on dress, whether it's on health, whatever it is that you are willing to say, yes, Lord, not my will, mm -hmm. but thy will be done. Amen. And I think that's so powerful because you have so many young people today that are thinking, well, if I adopt dress reform, yes. I, no man is going to look my way. I thought you that know? too. Yes. And they're, they're, they, mm -hmm. he can't see my shape, so mm -hmm. you know he's going to be looking elsewhere. But that's not the type of man you want to attract anyway. Right. You yeah. want a godly mm -hmm. man. And let me just add yeah. that, you know, when you're, when you're walking with God, you have to take that leap of faith. Even mm -hmm. if you might not see it, you might mm -hmm. not understand it. Because I kept battling with, my, with the Lord and saying, you know, I don't, I don't want to. I don't like it. But once you submit and you say, again, not my will, but thy will be done, you just take that leap of faith and say, okay, what's the worst thing that can happen? Okay, I'm going to dress the way that God has me to dress. Um, how am I going to feel? Well, so far I have not felt um, unattractive. I have not Amen. felt, um, you know, nervous. Okay, let me see who's going to see me in the mm -hmm. store. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you walk with peace. You yes. walk with peace. Once yes, you just give true. it up and let go and let God, as That's we say, right. mm -hmm. um, 
he will take over and your, your life will be transformed. Amen. There's mm -hmm. a true freedom with it and a Amen. beauty that comes yeah, with it, yes. a femininity. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's and just men beautiful. are looking for feminine women. Yes. Mm -hmm. I remember um, coming from the bank a couple times and an uh, older man uh, stopped me and was like, wow, you look like a woman. You don't see ladies like that anymore. Mm -hmm. And so... Yeah, it's really interesting. It is, especially when they see young people mm -hmm. doing it. Yes. You know, it's very out yes. of the ordinary, mm -hmm. but it's a blessing. And it's an encouragement to other young ladies as well. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you out here are being encouraged as uh, our sisters are sharing their experiences. Amen. So um, how instrumental, since you brought in husbands, Kathleen is also <laughs> married. And yes. as I introduced them, they both have children. Kathleen just gave birth a few yes. months ago. Hey. So, yes, and also <laughs> Chanel, so yeah. praise the Lord. Um, so how instrumental have your husbands been in your journey with dress reform and with some of the struggles that maybe you still might have from time to time that comes up or temptations? Um, do you share those with him? Has he been an encouragement? Can you just share with our viewers um, the role that your husband has played and is playing in your dress reform journeys? Yes. Um, so interestingly, during it was the end of 2015 when I was seeking the Lord around that time, um, God was working on my husband's heart. Mm -hmm. He wasn't my husband at the time, but <laughs> he was working on his heart as well. And we were seeking the Lord together. And um, I would express to him, you know, some of the things that God was tugging my heart on with the dress reform, um, you know, pants wearing, you know, all the, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, I would express to him that this is what I'm hearing. Um, I don't know how to let it go. Um, it's, you know, been a lifestyle. And, you know, he would listen. And as I would draw closer to the Lord, he was very um, helpful in role playing with me. Mm -hmm. um, what I mean by that is he would ask me questions as if somebody like an unbeliever would come to me and say, why do you um, wear a skirt or, mm -hmm. you know, why do you do this? Helping me to defend right. my beliefs. Okay. And he was very instrumental there mm -hmm. because um, we're going to be faced with those mm -hmm. questions, you know, in the workplace and school, wherever you go. And so him doing that for me helped me to, um, you know, get insight from what an, another person would say, which will help me to refine um, my answer. And one thing I want to say about that is um, whatever we say to someone, we want to say why we believe something in an attractive manner. Mm -hmm. So, for example, let's say somebody were to ask me, oh, why do you wear a skirt? Well, because my pastor said so or because my religion It's like mm -hmm. mm, people <laughs> repel, like right. especially with religion. Right. I don't want to hear anything about that. But if I were to say because God told me so, and it's for the glory mm -hmm. of God. I, I glorify him most this like way. That. Now it's like, hmm, you mm -hmm. know, yeah, they're interested, tell me, interested, more. Tell me yeah, more. And exactly. that's where your testimony comes in. Mm -hmm. And I really love the verse in Revelation 12 that, you know, um, it's, we overcome, you know, Satan through not only the blood of the lamb, but the word of our testimony is mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. testimony. And that's what's going to keep us, you know, during the crisis. Mm -hmm. So. I'm very thankful for my husband for challenging me mm -hmm. so that I can know where I stand and so that I'm not shaken when I am questioned by others. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you for that. sharing. That's yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thankful for my husband, you know, even from the time that we were courting. Um, and he was growing as well. He mm -hmm. did not, um, I did not meet him um, with him having the full knowledge of dress mm -hmm. reform. I was, um, I, I had just recently made that decision to begin that journey. He had, be, was starting that journey. Mm -hmm. So we kind of met at, you know, yeah. a crosswords there in, in that journey. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember at first I, I thought that, you know, because, you know, I'm courting someone, um, I need to maybe dress in a certain way that would be attractive. Mm -hmm. And again, I was still unlearning. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Some things that were, you know, you, you're grown up with the understanding, you know, if you have it, flaunt it um, mm -hmm. or do so in the, you know, what have you. So I was trying to do that. Mm -hmm. And I remember particularly I wore this green dress to church one day 
And I was expecting him to say, wow. <laughs> mm. And he just said, wow, that's very green. <laughs> and that, <laughs> and um, I'll never forget that because, number one, I never wore that dress again. And wow. number two, um, I just, his definition of beauty was different. Mm. Praise and God. I think it's important for men, for husbands, to really elevate that standard of beauty mm -hmm. as, as it is in God's eyes. Right. It really helps, though. It takes the pressure off of the wife, the woman, um, the young lady to feel like they have to um, to to um, flaunt yeah, it showcase. as it was mm -hmm. showcase their bodies. Right. Um, but true beauty in God's eyes, if that's also, you know, really practical um, for the husband, that mm -hmm. expectation is not going to it's going to be beautiful. That expectation it becomes now a reality mm -hmm. and it becomes easier to fully transition. So now my husband will compliment me when I'm dressed modestly. Mm -hmm. You know, that began to become more and more normal. So I didn't, it, it, there was no pressure whatsoever. So I'm really thankful for that. And when you're praying for um, a man of God, you want someone that will encourage you because he could have been on, a, on the other side mm -hmm. where, right. you know, when you're dressing either immodestly, he's, you know, beating over the head with the Bible mm -hmm. as it were. Um, but when there's love in the home mm -hmm. and when God is um, working through um, the hearts of the spouse, the spouses, they will, you know, agree to walk in God's word and his order without any reservations. Yeah. So. Amen. That's Beautiful. why it's so important to be equally yoked. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very mm -hmm. much so. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Mm -hmm. There's so much more that we could say. Yes. So much more. Can I say <laughs> but, one thing oh, really yeah, quick? Absolutely. Um, for individuals that are not in that um, space, so you're, you're not a husband or a wife, you're not even at the age, you're not interested in that. At the time, you're a young person, mm -hmm. a teenager. Um, I would also encourage you, you know, my husband, again, my best friend, he's my, in my society. Your society might be, um, well, let me say, when you choose your friends, you want to choose people that are like-minded because mm -hmm. it also makes the the process easier right so um if you're choosing friends that's just all worldly it's going to make it so much harder mm -hmm. to dress a certain way because you're going to be picked on you're going to be ridiculed you're going to mm -hmm. be you know made fun of or mm -hmm. etc so when you choose individuals that are like-minded that are trying to get to heaven because at the end of the day we all trying to get to heaven right. Amen. um mm -hmm. then those people will be there to now encourage you mm -hmm. and you when up. you feel like when you're slipping when you're you know maybe looking at other fashions that may seem really tempting you may have a sister or a brother that mm -hmm. might say hey that's that's not how we should dress if we're trying to glorify mm -hmm. god not right. trying to glorify ourselves right. not trying to glorify this brand or whatever mm -hmm. so we just have to just make sure you cover all those grounds and choose your societies wisely. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Accountability is so big. Accountability mm -hmm. is very big. And also, if you're on the other side, if you're a person that may be slipping and someone comes to you in love, don't feel that you're being judged or you're yes. being picked on. Understand <laughs> that they're coming to you for your best interest. They're not mm -hmm. coming to you to condemn you or anything like that. So if an older sister or somebody just says, hey, you know, um, I noticed you're wearing this. Let me share this with you. Or maybe you will pray with them before you share what you have to share with them. If you're on the receiving end of that, receive it. Take it to God in prayer. Don't be so easily offended yeah. and allow self to rise up. Right. Because we have to we have to be our brother's keeper. We have right. to be our sister's mm -hmm. keeper. And so if you all see <laughs> any of us slipping, you know, Please, you know, don't talk about us behind our back, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, in the spirit of Christ. Um, come and share from yes. the word of God. And so um, we've come to the time where we are going to share our closing words. What mm -hmm. closing lasting words do you want to leave for our viewers, whether it's a scripture or just an encouraging word to those that are viewing at this time? Yes, I would say it's important to seek God with all your heart. Mm -hmm. um, make him your number one priority. Mm -hmm. And once he sees that you are earnestly seeking him, um, you know, he, just like with Abraham, when he called him out, he will meet you where you are. Mm -hmm. He will continue to encourage you, give you confirmations along the way. Trust the process, be obedient. Um, the obedience is always better. Um, 
And especially as daughters of God, whatever he's asking us, it's for our benefit. It's a protection. He loves us so, so um, keep that in mind. And I know that when we all get to heaven, you'll praise the Lord that you were committed to his will and his will alone. Amen. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I would also add to um, what my sister said. Number one, I, I really didn't, I would never have thought that I would be sitting on a couch in any forum giving a testimony <laughs> of dress reform. Again, it was a struggle for years. Mm. Many times my brother would bring me into the room or talk to me and say, listen, you have to, you know, mm. change. And I, and I really um, struggled with it. <clears throat> mm. I was um, really scared that I would keep on going back because that was a norm for years. Mm -hmm. And I want to leave you all with this promise. Once you make that decision to submit to God's will, um, Philippians 1 verse 6, being confident mm -hmm. of this very thing, that he, God, which hath begun a good work in you, he will perform it mm -hmm. until the day of Christ Jesus. Christ is going to complete that work of transformation, of conversion, in all of our hearts, once we just make that first step, we have to um, practice and exercise faith. Mm -hmm. And once we make that first step, then we're going to realize strange things happening. Like you might actually prefer wearing skirts. Mm -hmm. You might actually prefer mm -hmm. wearing um, dresses more than you did um, um, wearing pants. You Absolutely. might actually say, whoa, I feel... I don't feel fully dressed unless I have my skirt mm -hmm. reaching a certain length mm -hmm. uh, or whether whether Even it's comfort. Yeah, it's you might feel comfortable. more comfortable mm -hmm. that yes. way. Which you might say, case. OK, mm -hmm. actually, if it's me, you might. Oh, you know what? I don't I don't think I like this taste anymore. Mm -hmm. I might just prefer to eat healthier options instead. You know, so once we take that leap of faith, God is going to complete that work. Mm -hmm. yes. It doesn't happen overnight for mm -hmm. some for myself, for, for some of um, for some on the. <laughs> online it might not happen overnight for you but don't become discouraged because that transformation doesn't happen just trust the process and trust what god will do um through you and then you will be able to encourage others yes um just the same so Amen. by god's grace it's a daily process um and god is here to walk with you each step of the way Amen. Well, I just want to thank you both. I can. I have nothing to add. I think you all said it beautifully. And I thank you both for sharing and being, again, transparent with us. And, um, and I hope you viewers took away from their testimonies and all the principles that were shared, that their transformation was not from the outside inward. It was from the end. It, the transformation begun in the heart. Yes. So once the heart is reformed, then everything else will reform. Not Amen. just the dress, but the entire <clears throat> character. So God works from the inside out. But it all begins with surrender, yeah. with submission to God, full mm -hmm. submission. And again, it will be, there will be times when you have to struggle. You have to fast. You have to pray. You have to wrestle with God. But the struggle is well worth it. Yes. And the blessings yeah, far is. exceed the struggle. Mm -hmm. And what yeah. you gain from dress reform or whatever um, reform <laughs> you adopt, yeah. it's, you, you're not even considering what you gave up. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like dung. <laughs> you oh, count yes. it as dung. <laughs> right? That's so true. We will see you next time and we will have other guests on to share their testimony. And please put in the comments as well if you would like to see Chanel and Kathleen back. There's so <laughs> much more that we can share yes. here. So That's again, true. God bless you all. Until next time. Maranatha. <laughs>